Title track. Oh, the old Snooker Punch. Snooker Punch is Croatian for snooker. <laughs> for me, I, I remember the first time I had the demo of this, just the bit where the guitars break loose. It just reminded me of like the Matrix soundtrack, like Rage Against the Machine, like falls, like heavy. And I was just like, that mixed with like a dance or sort of backbeat element was just like really exciting to get sort of stuck into. And um, yeah, just couldn't wait to, to track it basically. It, it was a weird one, I remember, because we did pre-pro at Dan Flint's house, at the dog house. No, sorry, the boneyard. 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 We did some pre-pro at the boneyard, and like, I remember being outside Max having a coffee, and I was like, we should try and get hold of that that file from the session we did the other day in the studio, because it, there might be something on there that we can show everyone. And then like, we, I almost feel like we were all, Kind of packing up to leave. Dan's yeah, we literally house. were. We were like, "All right, mm. cool, let's go to Thailand," kind of thing. And then you guys were like, "Oh, we've got this song." We were like, well, it, was, uh, it, was, "It was like what? a ninety-second clip." It was literally like, yeah. and it wasn't even the chorus wasn't even on there because that we had that as like a voice note on Max playing the piano and me just mumbling some nonsense. And it was just like, it was strange that. But as Chris was saying, it's almost like the energy of that sort of like. 60 second, 90 second clip, we're like, okay, we could do something really cool here that would really blend a lot of like our tastes and what we're all individually listening to and bring it all together. And it was strange because I had no, I had no idea that song was going to kind of end up becoming what it became. Mm -hmm. But dude, it you was had that riff hypnotic. so long. It was hypnotic, the beat, wasn't it? It's just like, yeah. you just couldn't stop listening to it and nodding your head. It was like one of those all day loops as Dan Austin calls it. You just want to just yeah. listen to it all day nonstop. But yeah, I remember Franceschi, you literally had that riff for so long, I swear, for years. You, but you'd always play it on like an acoustic guitar. You're like, I've got this riff. Dun, 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 you, like, because it was always on an acoustic, yeah. it was just like, yeah, yeah okay, <laughs> like, I, like, I got it. But like, I don't have it just yet. And then when, yeah, you yeah. did that session, came back and it was like, put in this way, like electronically, like almost amazing, like 90s dance vibes, like Ibiza, old school. I think it was, it was just oh, like, shit, man, I get it. It's the yeah. aesthetic, man, isn't it? <laughs> it was like cool, like having that riff and knew it was a good riff, but it's all about what goes around it. And like kind of going down that 90s dance route really kind of gave us character, you know? Again, pushing and doing a bit of genre mashing again, like taking influence from what we've listened to and having a vibe. It's There might have been minimal 90 seconds there, but actually what you had was a vibe. And that's what every, I think everybody grabbed onto was how exciting it was from the minute you put it on till that demo finished up to after the first big da 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 da. Once it finished after that, it was like, well, we can go anywhere with this. Like that's just the buttons and let's even stay. just like hearing that intro part was just like I was sat there like. I'm already in. I'm already hooked here. It was it was sending the hairs on my arms up and everything like the chord of Marshall. You know, you're getting a bit of that. We could all hear um, where it where it could go, couldn't we? Yeah. It's just like, I know where that's going. Like, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it's just this at the moment, but I but I, yeah. I bloody know where that's going. And the second that sort of it's quite clever as well how it built up from like a like a dance dance esque verse with like a backbeat and sort of building up and. Usually you'd expect something like that in a dance song to drop with like just an even bigger beat, whereas for us to then drop into just heavy as fuck yeah. guitars, which just it mer merged the two sounds really well and then allowed us to sort of go where the yeah. song went eventually. Like without those two meeting, it just would have never worked. It would have just sounded awkward. So to have that transition like really helped us sort of bring it into our, our realm, I'd say, like rain it back a tiny bit and make it, make it really yeah, work. Yeah, totally. And just like, as soon as those vocals drop at the start, now, I'm getting vision. You're there just like, oh, wow, it's sort of, it's euphoric as fuck. I think this was maybe the other track yeah. that we were sort of thinking would open the album if it wasn't for Nice To Me, wasn't it? I think it was one of those ones where it really kind of sets the tone. It's like that riff coming in, the filter sweep happening, and then that, that vocal coming in and you're there just like, like this is quite eerie and like you said before it's quite matrix it's quite movie soundtrack and yeah really just sort of excited us all didn't it i remember i can yeah but i also kind of it taking for fucking ever like i feel like we literally worked on that song relentlessly throughout the whole process of being in thailand to try and yeah. like finesse it 
and they would they would they would nights. Nice. Mm. I don't know. Maybe it was just on on me and sorry if it was, but like they'd be nights. Nice, so I'd go to bed. I'd be like, Are we ever gonna get that song right? Mm. Like it's, I it, think it was. It was getting the chorus, wasn't it? It was, it was uh, getting the chorus because the verse and like the riff bit was so worked so well together. It was like getting the confidence to then go into that huge sort of lift your hands in the air chorus thing. So I, once we got that, I think it was it was just sorted. Wasn't and it? I think as well as like it almost had a bit of pressure to it as well because you could hear how great it could be and none of us wanted to just be like oh yeah cool we'll throw a chorus on it we'll throw this on it that'll do kind of thing oh yeah it's a great song it was almost like no no this this could be a really like special song what's funny as well is that the chorus chords were the same chords and the same progression as the shitty piano demo that josh and myself wrote on the day you know mm. it was just it was taken from its bare bones of being on something like this to right, let's pick our up it because we hadn't played it. It's like, well, let's just try and play the chords. It was like, well, I've got these chords, let's see if they work. And it was just gelling it all together. Magic That's quite that. a few mid lates as well. Like, I remember like, after the bridge, the drop down chorus, I think we had about six different versions of it. Do you remember how much of it? That yeah. was the biggest pain of the song, I think. Cause it was just like, one time it was too pop, then it was too heavy, then it was too electronical, and then it wasn't, it didn't have enough. It was, it was just like, at, where at, is it? Yeah, one time it built it, didn't it? At one time, it was just going to build into something completely new and not even go back to the chorus, mm. if I remember right. Um, I'm glad we didn't do that. <laughs> totally. But you're right, though, Josh. It did take a while to sort of finesse. And I think um, that is because of having sort of pressure on the song because we all knew how good it could be. And look, at, uh, you know, it ended up being the title track and sort of one of the main singles for the album. So we all knew that it could get there in the end. Why you gotta kill the moon? Who killed your mood? Well, this one, this one sort of came to life through a songwriting session, and yeah. I, I it was actually we, first recorded we, in a completely different studio. I, I think we actually killed the mood when we played the song right, Josh. We thought we wrote an absolute gem. I remember it was in LA, and we played to everybody, and it was just like, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. And I just remember saying, I think it was wrong time, wrong place. We're yeah, in LA in the dressing room, like, having a mad time. You're like, listen to this song. We're like, what? <laughs> no, I think it's because the song you said before was Beautiful Way and everyone was buzzing off it. You said this, right? Everyone was like, yeah, it's a cool tune, man. You're like, no, it's really cool. <laughs> It was it was one of the most yeah. weird ones because like we were we just done a show in Pomona and then we got we all piled into a car and drove to LA so that we could kind of have more time in LA like sort of the day of the show or whatever and and I remember like just being like I don't really like we've lived in LA so we know what it's like we know what it's got to offer I don't really want to spend the day just sort of like pottering about and like I don't know going to fucking Chipotle or something like that so it was like ended up just rolling into this into uh, these guys house doing this song and then not ever knowing if it's gonna see the light of day until we kind of i think we regrouped because it what's weird about the song is that it's been recorded in three different studios right it's been in los angeles yeah. then that one in kent i don't remember what it's called blue bell hill. 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 hill and then obviously we did it did we, we did it properly in thailand or we did some more work on it in Thailand. I can't. Remember. More work on it in Thailand. Yeah, more work. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, it, I think the song the song's got character because it kind of blends again a lot of things that I think we're all into 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 one song. But it was just a weird. Literally went to a studio for like two hours, came out, and then we sat on this idea since about 2018, just waiting to to know or feel if it was ever going to be something. Um, it's interesting there with the first initial like, idea and the first writing process was in LA because it sounds quite LA. That's you know it. what I mean? Like that's it's got thing. that kind of vibe to it. So it is interesting that being in a different environment in a different place can give a song that feeling. We, we wanted, we were kind of trying to emulate, I guess, the, the the sort of vibe that you get off like a Kendrick Lamar song. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we were like Kendrick Lamar with guitars. And yeah, I don't know. It was... Um, uh, Max, you were saying before it was you. You had the the chords for a while as well. Hadn't you? Yeah, I, I've been. I, what I do annoyingly is I, if I get an idea that I like, I batter it to death in a sound check till somebody recognises it. And um, I remember being in Birmingham and on tour. I think it was the Night People tour, so we're going that far back. And I had the chorus. Well, the, like the chords at the start of the song was it A minor, E minor, D minor. And you're like, that sounds really cool. And then. Fast forward like two years later in LA, just like, 
Why don't you just use those chords that you played in that sound check in Birmingham? And it just... Oh, I'd do everyone a favour because if we actually recorded it, you'd stop playing it in sound check. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, I was, yeah I was nice trying one. Trying to save the sanity of, of the other lads. It was also <laughs> helpful because it was like you know, I had other parts kind of ready to go. You know, and like the chorus being like the sludgy kind of down down progression, kind of like the Beatles s kind of thing, or like Oasis, like knowing that it had to bring some of that swaggy rock and roll into a West Coast hip hop kind of sound, which was the middle ground to meet the song. And the, I'd it's my, quite I, cool as well in terms of like vocally. It's not usually if we get to a chorus, the classic Josh Francesco and Yumi at six thing is to do is to go big and brash and loud and energetic. Where it's quite cool that like this is a type of track where you're flexing a different style and it shows off other styles of music that you like because you sort of you keep it in that lower register, that kind of lazy sort of feeling, which is which I think is cool. Again, it shows another side to sort of your armory, didn't it? Do you remember when you were doing the vocals and I think it was, it's like, yo, if you want it to be like LA, you gotta be, why you gotta kill them? <laughs> and it's like, I'm, I'm from sorry, dude. Like, I'm not from Yeah, it was brilliant. I'm from the home counties, brother. Yeah, don't you know? Um, but E5 now, E5. don't you? Uh, <laughs> but it's like, it was just, yeah, it was just, it was a weird one, but it was, it was like such a clash of, of different things in the song, and then kind of like, in a really, in a really kind of strange. I know, ne I never heard that song having like a fucking ripping guitar solo on it, and I remember mm. being in Bluebell, and I've been like, right, we need to like, how can we lift it to another point? And you've been like, I know. <laughs> well, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh, so that's why it fits as well. All I remember is it being two in the morning and I could barely see. Yeah, yeah it was lots of notes being played. It was very hazy, was very Ethan, wasn't it? Very. I love that bluesy feel that Cheese brought in from that uh, that solo as well. It sort of half matches that vocal melody and then it sort of goes off in this kind of yeah, this style that just like, it, although Clapton like you said, like, Josh, like what's that? It's like almost like Eric Clapton. That's what kind of yeah reminiscent of to me. Was. That's it. Mm. Although you can't really hear sort of on that style of track, like if someone said, "Yeah, it's going to be a guitar solo on it," you'd have been like, "No, there's not." Whereas actually, it fits so perfectly yeah. and so well. Like it's, it's brilliant. Very sophisticated. It's um yeah, does mm. the job brilliantly. Well done, Che, mate. Well done, Che. Thanks, mate. Good work. Well good done, work. Mate. That's cute. Yeah, no. well, One good. of our favourite places to uh, play shows. It is. Um, okay. So yeah, quite quite good that it's uh, made it as a city onto one of our albums, isn't it? Really? Yeah, our, no, this... no, done it for me. no yeah. I don't think any other track is called is named after a place, is it? So yeah, yeah. No. This is this was um this was uh, one of those songs that kind of wrote itself. To be honest, it wasn't wasn't very challenging um in terms of i i had this I, had, I wrote some chords on the guitar and i wrote some words to those chords on the guitar <laughs> and, and then i and then i wrote some melodies to those words and the chords uh no but just why, first of all why are you doing a sheffield accent when we're talking about glasgow i, I want to hear it in a scottish he's a, he's a man of the man of the of the planet man, man of the uk Man of the people, I, I, I don't think it's fair just to single out one location on the on a map of the United Kingdom. Um, now nah, it, it was it was it's one of those, isn't it? We're like just as I said, like sort of sat down, came out, brought it to you guys, and went, look, this is what it is. Um, I think it'd be cool if you guys did what you do best on these parts, and then at the end of it, we just go fucking mental and go really loud. And then that, and then we literally jammed it for like three or four times. I went, that'll do, let's record that in Thailand. And it was just kind of, it was, it, again, it wasn't a song that needed, I, I mean, I, and the other thing was that when we played it to Dan Austin, he was like, yep, all you know what I want to do with that, or you know exactly how we're going to put that together. And it was, a, it, it kind of like was, like a very personal and sad song to put together, but actually really enjoyable, which was kind of yeah. not, what, not what I was expecting from doing it, to be honest. Mm. Um, and yeah, for me, just that, that from sort of the second chorus onwards on that song, I'm just like, it just, that explosion of, of, of sound is kind of, 
again, is a highlight for me on, on the record um, that we've, we've put that together. Really enjoyed tracking. Yeah. I think this is one of the best songs we've ever written, to be honest. And I used, yeah, obviously, yeah, it's one of those ones that we did come together and jam. But I mean, I just remember you coming in to my house and being sat on the sofa and just with this acoustic guitar and just playing this song, just you and an acoustic guitar. And it was just like, quite breathtaking actually it was like wow fucking hell like that is amazing it was just incredible to to watch and then to be a part of afterwards and it was like you sat there and you were like i think you should play something like this and i think you should play something like that and you almost directed it and you were like this is what i'm hearing in my brain and we were like we know exactly what you mean went in and uh, picked up our instruments and like you said it took what three or four jam throughs and we were like that's it. That's it. That's exactly how it should be. Like it's that perfect. Was, that was how much of the magic it was. I think we only played it three times in your studio, and we just went up. Mm. Oh, that takes the best one. We used that one, and lo and behold, look where it's at now. After in, like playing it three times, it's a core mm. idea. And I think it's. Te- I think this is a testament to you, Josh. Is that you come up with some fucking great ideas, you know? And you had you had the idea in your head. You had the chords. You kind of had a, a sketch of melodies, you know, lyrics were going to come to you later on down the line, but when you have the core foundation of the song, I think all four of us could hear how great it was. And I think we just wanted to take your lead. You know, this was, this was something that you wrote and it was like, I think you put trust and faith into us that we could execute the parts the way you were hearing it in your head. The song fits so well artistically on the album as well. It's like when you listen to songs like Sucker Punch, and nice to me and it's just like it's almost sort of like what's happening and then you get to Glasgow and it's that moment of like sort of like it, it, it's over whatever that may whatever that may be and mm-hmm. it sort of works in the story you know it's, it's sort of like it's it so well creatively fact, it? it's like almost before and after the fact it's like you have all this angst and stress and build up and just like letting everything go and then you get to Glasgow and it's sort of the culmination of that whether it's the it's the dealing with it, the getting over with it, or the just sort of release of an emotion, really, isn't it? It's all, it's all those yeah. things sort of released into this one. Again, another really long song, and I love that we sort of had the balls to just let it run its course and not trim it down, not radio edit it, not... We just literally just played it for as long as the song should be, and it, it, I'm not one to bored of it at any point. I think it all builds in such a nice way, and um, yeah, like Dan said, I'm really proud of it and I think it's probably probably one of the prettiest pieces of music we've ever written I'd say. It's weird I hadn't really thought about the record like that Matt until you said it but it's weird how like the record in its own way all the songs are part of a, a story in some capacity like without it being the, like, the sucker punch it's like every song relates to have getting a fucking sucker punch. Yeah so it's like it's without it being a concept record it kind of became that but it's not if that makes sense like it's an interesting one, and yeah, I think it's um, look. I, my, I think I speak for most Yumi Six fans, being the the president of the Yumi Six fan club. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can say this, but I, I I fucking love it when we do slow songs. I always have. Yeah. We've been even from you know you look at tigers and sharks and always attract on on take the colours right through all of our records. We've always had a slow song of sorts on an album and. Yeah, this this one feels like this feels to me. This sounds like a sophisticated band that knows now how to do it, you know, and like just to hit all the hit all the right notes at the right time. So, yeah, definitely, I think it will be. Um, I'm sure it will be a song that will uh, will be part of our set list for for years to come. And I hope. I think it's going to be a fan favorite as well. I can see like with the record being out. I think it's going to be the one that people are going to talk about the most. I really do believe that. How how special is recording in general in Abbey Road? Did you guys like love it as much as I imagined you did? Absolutely. I remember when we got there and we went into the um, into the room upstairs, like where literally like legendary records have been created, and they were just like, "This is what we did yesterday with the eighty piece orchestra," and just stood in front of the speakers and listened to it in this room with so much history. And I was just like, "I've I've I've done it now." It's another thing that I actually ticked off my own personal bucket list, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was fighting about the tears, mate. Fucking hell, Christ! Just hearing that, like, because I, mean, I don't even think the song was playing at the time. It was just listening, just listening to the orchestra, and we were like, "Oh my god!" All these people have turned up and played this song that we've all put together. It was just like, 
Well, I, I think me and you looked at each other like we, like we were yeah. we were standing in the front, and like you turned to me and I turned to you, and, you, and, we, and we gave each other that look of just like, like yeah, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <it, man. laughs> 